Thank you and good morning. I don't know that I have any varicose veins anywhere, but I am an old guy and I'm representing that portion of the population to talk to you about how we at Aqua Claire International are doing good. We're a small nonprofit NGO, but that one that has a large and ambitious agenda to do good. And our doing good has been happening right here in Holland very quietly over the last five years. What we do is design and disseminate technology that helps address the needs for clean water and improved health conditions in developing countries. Our particular focus is on those who live on less than $2 per day. Now you might say, why would we be doing that when there's so many needs all around us? Well, there's a global response and a personal response. The global response is found in the fact that nearly one billion people in the world have no access to clean water, much less are able to use it daily. Because of that, over three and a half million people a year die because of bad water and water-related diseases. And in addition of that number, 5,000 infants and children die daily because of water diseases. That's the equivalent of a jumbo jet crashing every four hours. There are three parts to my story. First of all, I'm going to describe the how and the what we do. I'm also going to describe who we are, a group of retired executives from various endeavors combined with volunteers and a small but highly competent professional staff to do good in a number of areas. Now, I'm not an, exec an expert, and I don't profess to be. I've only been inducted into this age group relatively recently. But I'm going to use this story to suggest ways that people nearing or in retirement can do good by evaluating an organization's program purposes, programs, and people. Now, I recognize by looking out here that many, for many of you, this isn't relevant. But I can assure you, if you play your cards right, you're going to get to this stage of your lives. As with most stories, this one has a beginning, and it stretches back 30 years. Our founder, Bob McDonald, was on his first trip through Africa for the Dow Chemical Company. He stopped in Lagos, Nigeria, and outside his window, he saw a woman taking water out of a rut, much like this one. She poured it directly into the pot she was using to cook for a meal for her family. That image stuck with him throughout the course of his career and followed him into his retirement as president of one of Dow's companies. When he started his retirement as an engineer, Bob started researching ways for tech to find technologies to help a woman like that, technologies that were clean and cheap water producing. We still do that at Aqua Clara. We design technologies that are scalable, sustainable, and that can be deployed in culturally appropriate ways. <laughs> Bob's first product was a redesigned bio sand filter. Up to that point, most such filters in developing countries are made out of concrete. They're very effective, and there are hundreds of thousands of them currently working. But they're very heavy. <clears throat> they typically weigh around 350 pounds fully loaded. Bob's idea was to use plastic, locally sourced plastic. As you might expect, that's much less heavy, very light, and very inexpensive to produce, and the filters made from it are cost-effective and affordable for those who want to purchase them. His work took place in the uh, Zealand Water Treatment Facility in the city next door. There he had daily access to a million gallons of raw sewage for his R&D work. <laughs> now, five years later, there are over 12,000 of these units in over 30 countries in the world. Our next pro uh, set of products are based on hollow membrane filtration. The filters that we are designing and disseminating now produce water that is 99.999% pure. This type of filtration began years ago in use in uh, kidney dialysis. The filters that we produce are scalable. We have filters that can be used in households, provide the uh, daily needs of a uh, family, as well as for a village that can produce upwards of 10,000 liters a day. 
All of this is produced at about a tenth of a cent per liter. We also have developed cost-effective means to uh, remove arsenic, fluoride, and heavy metals from water. These contaminants affect over 100 million people worldwide. Now work, our work takes place here in the BioE facility over on Howard Avenue, where we're hosted by Michigan State University. And one of the benefits, among many, of being located there is that we have access to Lake Makatawa and its rich waters, where we can continue <laughs> our R&D work. We also have offices in Kisi, Kenya, in Managua, Nicaragua, and through partnerships, we have a presence in over 30 countries worldwide. By the end of this year, all of our technologies combined will be producing about almost a million liters per day of clean water. That translates roughly into about 200,000 people that we're helping every day. Now the we in this story is a set of retired executives from many different kinds of businesses and endeavors who are leading the organization. We're joined by volunteers from all sorts of places and a small cadre of highly competent professional staff who are located both here in, in Holland and in Nicaragua and Kenya. What we do essentially is technology transfer. We take the technologies that we develop and we move them to other countries to create jobs and small businesses as appropriate. From our West Michigan perspective, we believe this is important. It's a way that rather than giving things away, it enables individuals and communities to have a better means to create ways to enrich their lives uh, in the way that they want to. Some examples of this they are found in Kenya. Right now we have 60 individuals we call community development entrepreneurs. These are mainly men, but some women, who have been uh, gone through an intensive training program. They now conduct businesses in uh, western uh, Kenya where the average income is about 79 cents US a day. They sell our water filters and other health improving products like rainwater harvesting sets. We also employ about 30 community health workers. These are all women, as in this culture, only women can go into another woman's house, and that's typically where filters are located. Their main responsibility is follow up and follow through. Ironically, these are two elements that are frequently missing from development work in many different countries. They go through an intensive training program too, and they're paid on a, a per project basis. We're also involved in training as part of our technology transfer process, whether it's here in Holland or in the field. We train corporate employees, clubs, rotary clubs, church groups, college and university students, and in-country organizations. We also train the trainers for, these, uh, for our partner organizations. And all of this combined helps us expand our reach considerably. We've documented the impact of our technologies and our recipients, a few of whom you see here. The most important and consistent outcome is improved health status. Our medical partners have documented the improvement in health of individuals and families in, these commu in many communities, and we've also recorded that through our evaluation program. Now, in addition to creating jobs overseas, we also have a job development program here in Michigan. We have a partnership with Can Do, the organization that provides opportunities for individuals with health or with mental and physical challenges. Can Do is assembling the core component of our new household filter. So, here's AquaClear International, one example of doing good in all sorts of places. We're meeting specific needs that we've identified. We just happen to be conversant in clean water. But as you all know, there's all sorts of needs all around us. And I submit there's a population of individuals who are ready to help address those needs through various organizations. Every day, there are 10,000 people like me who are turning 65 and becoming eligible for Medicare. In Michigan, 
Michigan's a home of 17% of these individuals nationally. My baby boomer colleagues are leading the surge, but I can assure you very few of them have a good idea about what they're going to do when they retire. They can be assured, though, that they don't have to start a new company. They don't have to go back 30 years to find something meaningful to do. They can start with what they know. All of us, usually, contribute on a regular basis to some good cause or some nonprofit. Most of these nonprofits are always open to volunteers. That's a good place to test the waters. Another thing to do is to think outside the box. Think of things that one couldn't do while working but wanted to. For example, one of our principals was never outside the United States throughout the course of his career. Now he's a seasoned traveler and he's very effective in the small villages in our target countries. Time, too, for us is an important factor. We want to use it as best we can and we want it to be meaningful. Recently, for example, a retired attorney told me, I just want to get up in the morning and have something that makes me want to get up. So to <clears throat> those who have made a transition into successful new careers have done so after doing some due diligence. This entails evaluating the purpose of a particular organization, see its fit with one's values and expectations, evaluate its programs to see how one's skills and abilities can help move that uh, purpose forward, and to identify compatibility with the people who make up that organization. Nathaniel Krolo, in a recent issue of Harvard Business Review, was giving advice to those like you who are moving through their careers. I think that advice is just as pertinent to retirees. He said evaluating and choosing opportunities is, <clears throat> is like confronting a series of stepping stones that extend in all directions. One's task is to be comfortable with and open to going from stone to stone until one finds that thing that is personally meaningful to them. For those of us in our age group, that means moving to opportunities to do good that is rewarding, renewing, and reaffirming. Thank you.